Hi, this is going to be the first in a series of videos looking at my collection of Electronics Australia magazines. I have the complete collection going back from uh, April 1965. This is the first ever edition of Electronics Australia and I've got the complete collection right up until uh, when they folded in uh, 2000 or so. So I thought it'd be interesting to take a look at some chronological history of various uh, technologies through the eyes of Electronics Australia magazine. So this video will focus on uh, test equipment. So what I'll go through, I'll do is I'll go through the uh, magazines. Won't go through every year, I'll go through like I'll jump in uh, two or five year steps or something like that and then look as technology, look at uh, in this case test equipment as the technology improves over 40 years or so. It should be really interesting. Let's go. And just as an historical footnote, this first ever edition of Electronics Australia uh, came about because they changed their name from Radio, Television and Hobbies. They had several name changes. Um, this magazine goes all, way back uh, to the 1920s, believe it or not. And here it is, April 1965, volume 27, number one, and it cost two and six. Love it. And here's a blast from the past, AWA Modular Solid State Test Sets, because uh, radio and... Uh, uh, other stuff was big back then, so we've got an audio and ultrasonic uh, test set, the um, MF uh, HF radio equipment test set, and VHF UHF test equipment test sets from AWA, classic Australian company. And here's some test equipment from University Graham, a real blast from the past. Uh, here's a three inch uh, oscilloscope price 60 pounds because Australia hadn't switched to uh, decimal currency back in 1965. So there it is. Um, vertical amplifier response uh, plus or minus 1 dB from 15 cycles to 150k cycles. None of this kilohertz rubbish. Uh, they were using uh, k cycles per second back then and down 16 dB at 1 mega cycles or 1 meg. So there you go. A um, 150 kilohertz <laughs> 3-inch CRT oscilloscope for £60. Beautiful. And then they have a valve and circuit tester because, well, <laughs> this ain't the solar state uh, era yet. Like, predominantly, still a valve and circuit tester. Oh, I'm sure some people still have one of those. And on the very next page here, check out this classic Philips PM3230 0 to 10 megahertz uh, dual channel scope classic round CRT on it but this is 10 megahertz uh, bandwidth and whoa, high sensitivity check it out 20 millivolts per division and with uh, times 10 gain down to 2 millivolts per division so this is you know this is 19 65 and this wouldn't you know these sort of specs weren't uh, out of place still well into the 1980s but they're still using uh, meg cycles per second there the new hf double beam oscilloscope not single beam it's actually a true dual beam oscilloscope ha oh, lab work accuracy field work portability only 24 pounds and 238 pounds duty paid bargain and from Warburton Frankie, we've got 15 pounds for a uh, leader LSG 11, uh, 120 kilohertz to 130 megahertz signal, uh, RF signal generator. And it's multimeter time, five pounds, bought you a whopping 4K ohm per volt analog multi-tester, multimeter tester, as they called them back then. So there you go, at uh, this one, whoa, real expensive, 15 pounds would get you a whopping 30k ohms per volt. And from Taylor, we have a high sensitivity uh, multi-tester for a whopping 31 pounds 15, but this one, 100k ohms per volt, that's what the OPV stands for, ohms per volt. And uh, it went uh, zero to 250 microamps in three ranges. It had a seven microamp uh, uh, center pole movement and zero to 10 microamps full scale. And on the back page here, thought I'd throw this one in, even though it's not test equipment. You can earn big money in television. Yeah, check it out. <laughs> Ask yourself these three questions. Am I in a dead-end job? Could I earn more by learning more? Could I use my spare time to get ahead? If the answer is yes, there is room for you in radio and television. Fantastic. The Australian Radio and Television College. And now let's jump ahead five years to January 19. 70, 
costs a whopping 40 cents. Decimal currency has uh, um, come into effect here in Australia. And check this out. They're um, still, of course, uh, saying, uh, you know, playing on the radio, television and hobbies uh, logo. And sales now in excess of 50,000. So there you go. They show that Electronics Australia had net paid sales of 50,616, an increase of 3,600 over 1969. Woohoo! Huge circulation. And with a national population of around 12.6 million in 1970, that means about one in every 250 people in the country read Electronics Australia. Ha oh, brilliant. And here's an ad for a Telequipment D51 portable dual beam oscilloscope. Now, you notice that uh, five years before, we had uh, dual channel on that, but now all you get for your money is uh, uh, zero to six uh, megahertz, 10 um, millivolts per division sensitivity. They're still uh, specifying per centimeter there. We have moved to the uh, square CRT type, but there's no uh, BNC inputs. They're still using banana jacks there. <laughs> Go figure. And it cost a whopping 250 Australian dollars back in the day. But look at this, distributed by Tektronix. Tektronix Australia were distributing tele-equipment oscilloscopes. Huh. And once again, we have another Philips scope. This is the PM3200, 10 megahertz, two millivolts per division for 304 bucks. And yeah, they're still selling the uh, 3230 we saw five years ago for $497. Now here's an interesting all-in-one lab. If you want a career in electronics, go Technic Pack. <laughs> Look at this, all-in-one lab. It's got, uh, it allows you to conduct over 400 experiments, uh, which contains a power supply, oscilloscope, vacuum tube, voltmeter, and audio generator and an RF generator. All in one. Beautiful. Doesn't tell you the price though. Please send me the free brochure. Electronics, Technipack and you. I understand no salesman will call. Yeah, you don't want to get spammed back in the day when you actually had to pick up a telephone and say hello and then, hi, I'm from Technipack. And I just thought I'd show you the pornographic centerfold. Oh. Look at that. Oh, oh. And we've still got these Taylor analog multimeters. They're still around, no prices on them, but uh, they're still going. And Radio House Proprietary Limited are at it again with their analog multi-testers. And here we have Lafayette with their EMC transistor analyzer kit. Hook it up, you can analyze your transistors because, well, transistors were bloody expensive back then. So you uh, not only uh, salvaged them from gear, but you know, you'd pay a lot of money just for one or two transistors. And if you could salvage them from anywhere, well, you had to test them. And we've got a deluxe 100K ohm per volt lab tester, VOM, volt ohm meter, 2% accuracy, half a percent multiplier resistors for a whopping 54 Australian bucks. Actually, this one's hilarious. It looks like it's just been chopped in half. Where's the bottom of it? It only has the two dials. This is the ohms adjust here, and this looks like the selector, and there's all your ranges. It looks like they're like little LEDs in there, but they wouldn't be uh, LEDs around uh, this age, uh, 1970, and it looks like you, so it's like, like a digital range selector or something like that. So you turn the knob and it chooses and indicates which range. Fascinating. I've never seen that before. And here we have some Australian made stuff. Classic BWD. They famously made um, test gear, particularly uh, oscilloscopes, back in the day. And there's some of them. Look at the huge screen on that monster. Absolute whopper. And here's their new release. Uh, the uh, BWD 506 DC to 15 megahertz. Uh, 5 millivolts per division to 20 volts per division. Uh, 1 meg input impedance, standard BNC input connector, but it's got a 5 inch uh, square CRT and times 5 mag. Nice. From 200 nanoseconds division to 2 seconds per division. Beautiful. And it's all solid state, none of that valve rubbish, protected fed inputs, isolated ground to 400 volts, um, TV and line frame uh, sync, 5% calibration, 10% line change, 500 kilohertz uh, horizontal amp, and it's only $298. What a bargain. And by the way, we have uh, skipped forward to the end of 1970. This is the uh, December issue. That's what we saw the BWD add in. And here is a uh, uh, advantage 
digital multimeter. Here's one of the first digital multimeters. Of course, no uh, LED display on that low price. They don't tell you what it is, but it's 17 ranges, and uh, we're talking 0.1%. It's pretty darn good. Standard, you know, um, three and a half digit, 200 millivolts uh, range, up to 1,000 volts, 200 microamp range. Uh, the current range is 0.3%. Uh, it's pretty good. So it's uh, plus minus, you know, uh, best DC volts, 0.1% plus 0.1% uh, full scale as well with standard 10 meg input impedance. I love it. No cat ratings back then. Didn't matter. And the resistance from 200k up to 2 meg at 0.3%. Not bad specs at all. And here's a brand that you'd still recognise today, Senwa. They are still going. Look, low cost, high quality multimeters, proven in over 90 countries. Brilliant. 25 bucks for a, uh, you know, a basic uh, tester, you know, a little one with a fixed uh, input jacks. Uh, hopeless, you spring for the uh, range selection switch for your 25 bucks. But there you go, distributed by Warburton and Frankie. And it's Christmas special time at McGrath's, Melbourne's Electronics Hobby Centre. 66 bucks. So this is like the uh, one hung low uh, cheapie of its day, I suspect. The TT1 oscilloscope. <laughs> and it looks pretty crusty, folks. They don't really give you anything in the way of uh, specs on this thing or anything. It's, look at, you know, like, you can't even see labels on there, but maybe it's just the fail. I'm sure there are. Oh, yeah, just. I think it's the uh, worn-out picture here, but, oh, look at the tiny little CRT in there. What do you want for your 66 bucks? Complete with handsome vinyl carry case. Oh. And I just came across an article by Leo Simpson, as you know, the editor of Silicon Chip Magazine. Still going strong today. One of the best electronics magazines in the world. Good on you, Leo. And here we have ED&E in uh, Melbourne selling uh, various kits. You could get a 1970s communication receiver, uh, solid state, a full kit, or individual parts. Now, although this is a test equipment video, I can't help but notice during these uh, five years that we've only looked at so far, it's all the ads. There's very few test equipment ads. Well, there's some uh, trimmer resistors, but basically they're all audio. Audio just um, dominates. This magazine, it's absolutely everywhere. Audio amps, receivers, all sorts of stuff. It's just, ah. Oh. And we've got some new instruments from HP here. A radiant flux meter. Check it out. I like it. Look at the sensor there doing the, uh, measuring the um, candle flame there. And uh, we've got a frequency multiplier as well. Not very exciting stuff, but there you go. And for the Tektronix aficionados out there, an announcement for the 2600 series uh, add-ons for the 7000 series oscilloscope, the 2600 mainframe with all the plug-ins. Oh, beautiful. And it's a Christmas sellout of Heathkit gear. All you Heathkit aficionados, here are some prices from the end of uh, 1970 from Warburton Frankly for various Heathkit kits. And I couldn't pass this one up, January 1973. Check out the outfit. Beautiful hat. But look at this. It is probably a uh, world first, although I think that we believe it's a world first. Anyway, Jim Rowe, you'll uh, be familiar with the name. It's the first construction project, the EA Digital Voltmeter. It's a digital VOM or a digital multimeter. So uh, look, it does ohms, DC, and AC. Whoa. And it used state of the art LED displays and the Fairchild 38. 14 LSI, which is equivalent to 3,000 transistors. I wonder how much this thing cost back in its day to uh, buy this kit. But check out the specs. Here we go. Four and a half digit readout. Um, three DC voltage ranges. Only went from 20 volt minimum, 200 volt to 2K. You can tell what they're uh, targeting there. Really uh, high voltage stuff. AC volts is the same. And th only three ohms ranges from 200 ohms, uh, 20K and 2 meg but it was four and a half digits. And here's the schematic for it. Used uh, FND 70 displays, which are uh, state-of-the-art at the time. Uses a 9602 uh, 500 kilohertz clock generator, 9307 uh, decoder for the displays, and uh, uh, LM740s, uh, 741s, op amps, bunch, whole bunch of discrete uh, transistors, and Bob's your uncle. And we'll jump five years forward. I was going to go to 75, but I just saw this classic uh, cover from December 1974. 
It's not test equipment, but here's a very young uh, Jim Rowe uh, showing the eDuck 8 computer to a very excited young girl. I like it. I'm probably going to um, do another video covering the um, early computers that were in Electronics Australia. So give me a thumbs up if you want to see that one. And here we are, January 1975, the Plessy Remote Copier Unit, i.e. a fax machine, basically. <laughs> Build your own hi-fi speakers and save, musical doorbell, breakdown te tester. The price has gone up to a whopping 80 cents now. And here's our friend Sanwa again, still going, taking out a full page ad in EA to uh, tell us that they're changing their logo from Sanwa with the little curly stuff there to, well, Sanwa. So yes, folks, marketing was full swing back in 1975. Why the change? Besides being more attractive, we think the new style presents a sharper image of precision, and precision is what Sanya is all about. 70% of all multi-testers sold in Japan carry the Sanwa brand, which isn't really surprising since Sanwa multimeters have exceptional built-in capabilities. Woohoo! And here's the Australian-made BWD oscilloscopes again, the model 530A, fantastic unit, uh, dual channel, goes uh, triggers uh, DC to 40 megahertz bandwidth, DC to 20 megahertz. There you go. No prices on them though, unfortunately. And here you go, folks. Here's why we call them crows here in Australia, or cathode ray oscilloscopes. Well, because there's a crow. This is an ad, classic ad for Kikasui. Um, my first oscilloscope was a Kikasui 20 megahertz dual channel. Saved up a crap load of money and bought it. And here you go. They've got a uh, five inch, seven megahertz uh, model 558, or a three inch, five megahertz cheapy. Look at that. No prices on them though. Sold by Jacoby and Mitchell. And just as an aside, here I've come across a little article on thin film flat panel viewing screens. Check it out. Contains 36,000 individual discrete electronic components. One per pixel. Haha. Oh, is this the world's first flat panel monitor? Fusion power. Energy for the future. Ah, <sighs> we're still waiting for it more than 35 years later. It'll get there. And I can't help myself. I'm a calculator nerd. Here's an article on the calculator wars back in 1975. Hewlett Packard, Sanyo, fantastic. Yes, Heathkit, still going strong. The Quattron micro computerized watch. No moving parts. Wow. And if you're a service tech or design engineer, you'd better get ready for the color TV revolution, folks. Woohoo! Grundy, color pattern generator. Fantastic. Only weighs 4.3 kilos and a PAL signal generator as well. Well, Radio House was still going, but apart from that, uh, January 1975, a bit devoid of test gear. What a bummer. More audio. Oh, we have some high drama here, folks. Dick Smith's staff in City Street Demo accusing Tandy of unfair business practices. You've got to be kidding. This had been the famous... Um, uh, Electronics Alley here in Sydney or uh, York Street here in Sydney where there are a whole bunch of uh, electronics shops side by side and Tandy were right next so, <laughs> right next door to Dick Smith back then. Oh, got to read this article. Well, here you go. The employees of DSC claim that Tandy is engaging in unfair business practice in order to squeeze out the specialist Australian retailers and gain market domination. To achieve this, they say, Tandy is prepared to suffer considerable losses during initial operations and then use market domination to regain lost profits. It's called front-loading. Threatened to uh, present Australia free enterprise, Tandy have invested $10 million into the Australian Electronics uh, business making a half million dollar loss in their first six months. The bastards. Well, look at this gem of an article we've stumbled across. Test equipment related. Andrew Kay. Have you ever heard of him? I haven't. Apparently, he invented the digital voltmeter. There he is. Happy smiling dude. Founder and president of non Linear Systems, the article by Greg Swain. You'll know the uh, name. He's <laughs> still a current staffer at Silicon Chip Magazine. Go figure. And there it is, folks. The world's first digital voltmeter developed by Andrew Kay in 1952 by Nonlinear Systems. Beautiful. Brings a tear to the eye. 
and we'll take a look at nonlinear systems uh, current models as in December 1975 the LM3 and LM4 are truly impressive instruments the more so when size is taken into consideration hand soldered fiberglass boards hold state-of-the-art MOS LSI circuits in units less than two inches high both models share the same case which can be dropped without ruining either case or calibration ah fluke Eat your heart out. December 1975, you can drop these suckers. In fact, there's no zero on adjustment on either instrument. This function being completely automatic, as is the polarity indication. That was a big deal back then. Polarity indication, and here it is. Isn't that a cute multimeter? The LM4. 5 DC, 5 AC volt, and 5 resistance ranges. Ah, oh, I want one. The things are only 1% uh, accurate, but... Gee, there you go, 180 bucks, Australian bucks, plus tax. Bargain. I'd love to get my hands on one of those suckers and do a teardown. Does anyone have an old, classic, non-linear systems multimeter? Someone must, somewhere. Ah, yet more Senwa. There we go, the N501 multi-tester with, look at that, looks like wood paneling on the sides. Beautiful. Two microamps, full-scale deflection. And here we have University Brand Instruments audio uh, generator for 60 bucks, a three inch oscilloscope for a whopping 170 bucks. That's a 1.5 meg uh, bandwidth, 100 millivolts uh, per division, best sensitivity, some professional and deluxe and popular multimeters, along with an RS signal gen for 60 bucks. And here we have a classic Dick Smith ad. There's the classic Dick head. I like it. It's Christmas time because it's December issue. And woohoo, we have. A DSE oscilloscope for 159 bucks, state of the art. And here's a classic trio, the CS1560, uh, 15 megahertz, dual trace, not dual beam. By the way, this is dual trace. It's only got a single beam where they alternate between the two beams and uh, 10 millivolts per division. They're still using per centimeter there and uh, free probes. Beautiful. All for a whopping 399 bucks, complete with the two probes worth $70 two exclamation marks and here's a 0.3 percent accuracy dmm the uh, dl703 i mean these things were actually pretty done accurate for the day you know we've seen like uh 0.1 percent even uh more than five years before this it just terrific stuff and yes folks you can use your bank card to buy it none of this visa and mastercard rubbish watch out folks latest technology coming out mtl it's going to replace all your TTL stuff. It's uh, I2L standing for Integrated Injection Logic or MTL standing for Merged Transistor Logic. <laughs> Did it ever take off? And we're heading into the best decade of all, the 1980s. Bring it on. And here we are at January 1980. Gone up to $1.40 and Star Trek fans. Woohoo! Star Trek The Motion Picture. $20 million science fantasy. <gasps> what test equipment fantasy can we find in here? We have another ad for Trio. Check it out. It's the CS1560 Mark II Improved IC Circuitry. No prices. Bummer. Which features do I really need in my cassette deck? Oh, goodness. It's just audio, audio, bloody audio. Consumer electronics. Jeez. You'd think this was uh, two th you know, the 2000s and the era of Electronics Australia today and its final demise, but nope, it was rampant back then. Sanwa, still going. Warburton and Frankie, still going. Waldem Electronics Hardware, now available in Australia X stock. These girls look happy. I love the marketing battles that went on with uh, these ads back in the day. Leader, here's one for Leader Test Instruments. We've made a name for being ahead in reliability, user design features, and economy. But that's just the start, folks. Woohoo! Leader oscilloscopes. But they don't tell you jack all about it, really. They just, uh, you know, they just plug in their brand. And here we have a Hioki 3205 digital multimeter. It's uh, a field effect liquid crystal display. Ooh, ensures good contrast. Approximately 40 hours continuous use with alkaline batteries. Features include automatic and fuse overload protection and semi-automatic range selection. 0.3% DC volts. It's got amps. Voltage resistance is uh, half a percent 
as well, uh, plus minus 0.1 percent of full scale, plus one digit as well. Beautiful. That's available from H Row and Co. And here's an ad for Saw brand multimeters, the ME501, 70 from 78 bucks, tax paid, and uh, that one is 0.8 uh, percent. So we're getting. You know, increasing, this is more of your, you know, today's sort of uh, El Cheapo multimeter. And I have a bit of a soft spot for SAW because here is my SAW ME533 digital multimeter. Unfortunately, uh, the LCD is uh, ruined on it, but this is my first ever digital multimeter that I owned. And there is a classic ad of comparing this to uh, Fluke. Uh, we're comparing their meter to this one. And I hope I find it. But there you go. Bit of history. Will robots take your job? I don't know. It could be the end of the world. Oh my goodness, folks, check this one out. Why don't they make one of these anymore? A combined multimeter and calculator from Hyoki. Oh man, if you've got one of those, hold on to it. Rare as hen's teeth, I'm sure. The Model 32. 08 electronic function calculator with DMM capacity. One handed, one key operation gives you accurate answers. I love it. Oh, that's just terrific. I want one of these things. Look at this. The DMM figure is redisplayed in the form shown in the following. When, 100, when you read 190 millivolts, it's uh, keyed in as 190 um, times 10 to the minus 3 is displayed. Oh, man, I want one. And check out this little sexy Model 3207 pocket multimeter. Isn't that lovely? A 600 megahertz digital frequency meter for under 200 bucks? Yes! Only at Tricky Dicks. And for the same price, you can get a crow as well. I think Dicks' head's getting a little bit big now. Oh, the AC millivolt meter project from Ian Pogson. I remember building this thing back in the 80s. Don't know what ever happened to it though. There's the schematic. Piece of cake. Low cost portable oscilloscopes that don't compromise on performance because, well, you don't want a scope that compromises on performance. That wouldn't be good enough. Here we go. It's the TTM 303, uh, 15 megahertz mains and battery powered operation. 15 meg bandwidth. Beauty. And then we've got a now we've got another model, the BS310S, uh, with a whopping 2 millivolt sensitivity and an add, add subtract feature with a 95 whopping large 95 millimeter rectangular tube. And then, woohoo, the BS610 with no parallax display. Well, there was one good thing about the 1980s, all that audio stuff was uh, starting to get uh, displaced by all the uh, microcomputer stuff. The Dream 6800, oh, tricky dick ads for printers, the Super Brain, I love it. What do we got? At last, a real kit computer. No idea what that one is, the CompuKit 101. Beautiful, oh, look at that, the Commodore CBM. And the Rolls Royce of personal computers, <laughs> the Sorcerer from Tricky Dicks. Then we've got discounted Apple products, the Apple II, Rod Irving, Whoa, man, you went bust, and uh, selling the Sinclair ZX80. It's all happened. Oh, finally, some test gear. And we've got leader signal generators. You can still buy this uh, style signal generator today. Audio generator, a dip meter, and uh, a high voltage probe, all from Vicom. And there's the LFG 1300, a real high performance uh, 0 to 2 megahertz function generator. That would have been state of the art back in uh, 1980, that's for sure. And we've got some Hitachi oscilloscopes. Check it out, the classic uh, V5500, 50 megahertz for $1,795. That was a lot of money back in 1980. Let me tell you, even the uh, 15 megahertz unit at $595. It's pretty pricey, but uh, Hitachi made some great analog scopes, that's for sure. And this one's hard to miss. Two new Thandar LCD multimeters. Ta-da! But look at the battery life. 3,000 hours. Bloody beauty. Why can't anyone do that these days? The best you can get on the market these days is 1,000 hours. Look, 3,000 hours. Back in 1980. Give me a break. Nice little form factor too. But they go even better. 
4,000 hours for the top of the line meter, 0.1% for the TM model TM351. Brilliant. They've got matching little uh, compact, same case, frequency meters and pulse generators, aren't they? A beautiful set of instruments from Thandar. I really like those. I want them. And they also offer a model DM450 4.5 digit meter at 0.05%. That was kicking ass back in 1980. And here we have a 1980s vintage non-contact voltage tester. There you go, from University Graham Instruments. Dead or alive. The model's probably dead now, that's for sure. And as you can see, analog meters still hanging in there in uh, 1980. But if you're well healed, you'd pick yourself up a digital dual range switches just for fun. And I do love companies that would hand draw their ads. Look at that. None of this computer designed ad rubbish. You'd hand draw it, you'd send it in, and they'd uh, tape that in onto the artwork, send it directly to the printer. And in a sea of black and white, we've got Trio springing for a full page colour ad. That would have cost them a bit because that is physically different, uh, better quality paper printed separately than this one. And of course, they matched it with this Agfa uh, one over here so and this uh, Sony one. So they would be printed on colour. They would print that as a full colour page insert like that. Would have charged them a lot extra. But there you go. Trio, once again, no details at all. Just spruiking their, what looks like, their complete range of instruments. And let's jump ahead to January 1985. A whopping $2.30. And I remember these because this is the era when I was uh, saving up my pocket money, riding my bike uh, down to the news agent to try and eagerly pick up the latest copy of Electronics Australia every month. And I would memorize, you know, I would know every front cover off the top of my head and be able to, oh yeah, that project was in that one. Ah, oh, man, these were the days. And there's a young and spunky looking Leo Simpson, folks. And I couldn't resist. Check out this Playmaster Series 200 design from Leo Simpson. Classic amplifier design. Look out! The, look at the star grounding system coming out of that. Thing of beauty. And we have Altronics on the scene, folks. You'll still uh, recognize the name Altronics here in Australia. They're still going strong. They've got a precision electronic FET analog multimeter for a whopping $49. And here's the equivalent one hung low uh, cheapy. It's still a micron, but it's uh, a technician's 10k ohm per volt cheapy for 10 bucks. Beautiful. So as you can see, analog multimeters still pretty uh, predominant in this uh, Dick Smith electronics ad in 1985. If you want to go to digital, try this one for $59.50. I had this one. <laughs> I actually had the Q1140. That was their top of the range 100k ohm per volt analog meter. I had that puppy. Um, I don't think I still had it anymore. I think I uh, sold it a long time ago. But there you go. Um, for less cost, you could step up to a did the Q1444 digital multimeter, complete with the classic uh, side, you know, the uh, Fluke pioneered side buttons like that. Everyone was trying to emulate Fluke back in those days. And for 150 bucks, oh, get the very latest with transistor tester and capacitance check. Yep, it's got that too. Up to 20 microfarads. You gotta be kidding me. And get yourself a crow if you don't have one for 700 bucks. Probes are 30 bucks. Thank you very much. And here's an ad from Active Electronics in Melbourne. Once again, 700 buck Hitachi. They were big in the day. The V212 Absolute Classic. Um, I can remember using uh, that sucker was my main scope at my first uh, job back in 1980. Oh, hang on. 88. Yeah, I think that's right. 1988, I started work. There you go. That's what I used. And in an ad from uh, Jeff Wood Electronics, oh, rip, I bought my first uh, soldering iron, a Heiko 926 from uh, Jeff Wood. They've got the Kikasui 20 megahertz dual chase for uh, 625, including tax. Compact and easy to operate for hobbyists and professionals. And here's a full page color ad from Fluke. Look at that, displaying their entire range of handheld uh, multimeters and accessories. And this is from uh, El Mesco. They were the uh, El Mesco Instruments. They were the local distributor back then. And we're talking about, you know, the 8050A, the 8060A, which is their four and a half digit top of the range one, the 8024, the 8020B, 
it's all there. Free vinyl pouch. And Rodovin Electronics have done it again. A new multimeter at unbeatable value for under 40 bucks. This is a digital multimeter, folks. Whoa, unbelievable price. It's a Yufong brand. <laughs> a YFE 1030C is might as well be called one hung low. Large three and a half digit display, auto polarity, overload indication. <sighs> 20 milliwatts power consumption, it's got it all. And we jump ahead a little to December 1985 and a uh, JCAR ad, uh, the $129 digital multimeter. I can remember these. I can remember them being pretty crusty, if memory uh, serves me correctly. There you go. At least, at last, a low-cost 10-amp digital multimeter with transistor test capability, all for a whopping 90 bucks. And we have an ad from David Reed Electronics from, uh, as I said, Silicon Alley um, in York Street there in Sydney. And they're the ones who I purchased my first oscilloscope from. And here it is. Here's the first scope I had, which was the 20 megahertz Kikasui COS 5020. Um, I'm not sure how much I paid. I thought I paid a bit more than that, uh, 629 at the time. But geez, that was state of the art. And they also sold some uh, Escort brand uh, multimeters, the EDM 1105 through to the 1346 from 75 bucks up to 225 bucks, up to 0.05%. Once again, in that uh, familiar Fluke style, they're just emulating uh, Fluke. They were the pioneers, everyone else copied. But for price and performance, nothing beats Trio Kenwood for $599. Asterix. It's so sad, but we have to leave the 1980s for the 1990s. <sighs> and we have Jeff Wood Electronics back again. Wood for chips. He's selling the uh, Fluke 80 series, of course, was uh, around at this time. It uh, appeared, magically appeared, uh, from 1985 to 1990. There's a little weird sort of uh, rectangular format uh, auto ranging bar graph digital multimeter there. Eh. Yeah doesn't compete with the 87. Now, if you're going to try and attract electronics hobbyists to join the Royal Australian Navy, you don't do it by having a couple of good-looking, young, blonde-haired, fit, muscly guys run in. No! You show the technology, show the test gear, show all the tech stuff. Useless! I don't want to join the bloody Australian Navy and look like those guys. Ah, there we go. That's more like it. Some bodge wires. That's what we want to see. You want to join the Navy to bodge up some 74HC74s. That's the ticket. There's Rod Irving in his cheap ass ads again. Look, you can't even see the bloody scope. And no, that's not age doing that. I remember these ads from back in the day. They were hopeless. You couldn't even see anything. Didn't even tell you what brand it was. Useless. And here's a tricky dick ad for one of the best Casio calculators ever made, the FX61F. Why? Because it could do electronics. It had electronics keys. And as it so happens, I've got one. Ta-da! Oh dear, folks, you're going to recognize this even today, 20 years later. Look at the form factor. Look, you can still buy these $5 heap of crap Multimeters, it was their best-selling digital multimeter. 10 amp and resistance to 200 megs. Whoop-de-doo! But it didn't cost five bucks back then. You got five bucks off and it cost 79.95 at Tricky Dicks. And we have an ad for Obiet. Uh, and they're selling a whole bunch of uh, Fluke meters. The Fluke uh, 20 series, the 70 series, the 80 series. And the British-made Black Star range of digital multimeters and pattern generators and counter timers. And here we have the uh, introduction of the probe type multimeter for 60 bucks from JCAR. And check out this Kikasui Com 3101 actual size oscilloscope. This is its real size. This is an A4 size page. Absolutely tiny, 100 megahertz digital storage scope. Fantastic. DC to 100 megahertz, real time. Oh, can't beat it. Well, they claim it's real time, but uh, yeah, it doesn't tell you the sample rate. Aha, uh -huh. single shot bandwidth. There it is, 8 megahertz. So, yeah, the sample rate's not that huge. So, eh, real time didn't mean real time back then. Check it out. A full article review of HP's new E2377A handheld DMM. 0.3%. Pretty darn basic, but 
it was a HP. Very similar look and feel to the uh, Fluke 70 series, of course. Trying to copy it. Not a huge article, but there you go. It was a review. Finally, we have something decent on the back cover. Matrix. Here we go. The Matrix 50 series. I always lusted after one of those babies from 275 bucks. Couldn't afford it. Matrix 40 series as well. And uh, Europe's favourite multimeters. And check out combined analog and digital for 595 bucks. Unbelievable. And December 1990. And with ETI, Electronics Today International, they uh, folded, merged with Electronics Australia, and, well, yeah, they just kept the uh, title there on the front cover, but that was about uh, it. They kept it there for a long time, if memory serves me correctly. But look at the inside front cover. Ta-da! Marconi Instruments. High-end signal generators. Beautiful. Not all this audio rubbish anymore. At least we've got some decent sig gens. And, of course, they've got a review in there as well. And we have HP's complete range of handheld digital multimeters from $162 up to $311. Yes, in fluke yellow. You've got to match the flukes. And HP will literally giving them away. Ten of them each month. And my German viewers will be pleased to know that Harmeg are advertising in Electronics Australia back in 1990. From Kennelec, of course, the local distributors. But, you know, the full range of the Harmeg instruments, the scopes and how they all stack and all modular. Very nice. Ah, Rod Irving's still at it, folks. Blacked out multimeters. Hopeless and, you know, three and a half digit multi. Look, you can't even see the bloody thing. It's just a black blob. And here we have Gold Star, folks. And for those who don't know, Gold Star is the original name for LG. Yes, LG, who made consumer electronics. They also made oscilloscopes back then, uh, before they changed their name to Silly LG. I liked Gold Star better. But anyway, they didn't make a bad analog scope back then. One millivolt uh, per division sensitivity, 650 odd. There it is, 650 odd bucks for the uh, 20 megahertz version. And how much did the Fluke 80 series cost in 1990? For anywhere from uh, 466, including tax, up to 676. So pretty much the same cost as it does these days. But why pay up to 150 bucks for a label? Us, Jeff Wood. Wood for chips. Here you go. These are APA brand multimeters, which you'll know today as well. There you go. They had the Model 93 back then for 142 bucks. We're talking 0.5% uh, uh, DC volts, right down to. $240 for the Model 98. Ah, uh, I did love reading Moffat's Madhouse. Sadly, Tom Moffat's no longer with us. And here's Tricky Dick back at it with his 6.5 meg budget priced scope. And I still see a few of these roll up on eBay even today. Woo! And here's Altronics. There's Jack O'Donnell. It's not quite the uh, dick head, but eh, it'll do. And as you can see, by uh, 1990, pretty much uh, digital multimeters uh, dominated. If you didn't own a digital multimeter, eh, you know, you weren't keeping up with the time. So yeah, they still sold, you know, 100 bucks for a uh, analog uh, multimeter. Once again, you know, it'd be FET input, uh, something like that. But then they sold this uh, fluke ripoff one down here for 119 bucks. And or oh, if you couldn't make up your mind, you get the combined uh, analog and digital one for 200 bucks. Geez, you may as well buy an analog and a digital. And there's a LabTech brand uh, analog scope. You know, 20 megahertz dual trace, pretty basic for uh, 799 bucks. But yeah, they were there were so many rebadged oscilloscopes back in the day. I have no idea who originally uh, made that. It could be a Hung Chang or anything. And yes, Gold Star slash LG also made multimeters. Go figure. Would you like a free multimeter with your new? LCD TV, and yes, they had some porn on the back cover. There it is in glorious full color. Oh, you just lust after that Fluke 80 series. Oh, and the bendy hook uh, tilting bail on that thing. Oh, jump forward another five years to January 1995. Price has gone up to 495. Let's check it out. Inside the front cover, straight into it. I like it. Big full color uh, fluke ad for the scope meter series two and a Jeff Wood ad for the uh, Heiko 926 for 100 
and $99.95. I think I got it for about 180 bucks. And here's an ad for Emona. They're one of my current advertisers on the website. Hey, John. And this is for a 50 megahertz uh, analog scope dual channel for 1076 bucks. Asterix, price quoted, includes pro. Oh, it does include pro, but it excludes sales tax. There you go. It's a GW Instruments uh, made in Taiwan. 50 megahertz, two channel, one millivolt per division. Beauty. And then we have Tricky Dick selling a uh, dual channel uh, DSC branded scope, I believe, for uh, 729, including two probes. And of course, all the generic brand multimeters were in full swing back there. And there's our lab tech scope again. Ah. And HP is still trying to compete in the uh, handheld multimeter market. And there's some uh, souped up multimeters, big beefy four and a half digit true RMS ones. There you go, 50,000 count. Oh, 40 millivolt ranges, it's all happening. But whatever happened to the HP multimeter division, I wonder? And we'll just briefly jump ahead to July 1996 and look, with professional electronics and ETI, woohoo, contains everything. But uh, $5.50, let's have a look at the back here because it's the new Tektronics multimeters are a generation ahead of fluke. Measure for yourself. Woohoo, 30 day money back guarantee. Great stuff. The DMM 830, the 850, and the 870. Recommended retail price from 400 bucks up to 500 bucks for a 40,000 count 0.06% meter. Not bad. And August 96 here. Let's take a look at the back. What if a scope's real ability to solve problems could be found in a spec sheet? Eight hints for making better scope measurements. Please call for your free copy. Um, because, well, you know, <laughs> yeah, the web was just around then, but manufacturers really didn't have stuff on there. So they would uh, send you the article by snail mail, or they'd send you an app note, or they'd send you a data sheet for the product or whatever. And here's the HP uh, 54615B series, one gig sample per second, real time, you know, 500 meg bandwidth, terrific stuff. And December 96 was Dick Smith's last hurrah. Um, for the electronics hobbyists, they set up these new Dick Smith powerhouse stores and you could go in there and you could use soldering irons and you could talk to a dude who knew what he's, you know, who knew what he was doing because he wore an electronics tie. And here's a young fella coming in. How do I use this multimeter to fix this amplifier? Oh, let me show you, son. <sighs> and yes, folks, another five years later, January 2000, it had all gone to shit. Electronics Australia had uh, basically gone down the toilet. We've got an Apple iBook on the front cover, nice and glossy, thin as anything, absolutely hopeless, and just all consumery. Ah, oh, the sound crap's back. Graham Cadley, there you go. Want someone to blame? Ah, uh, there was just nothing left. Look, oh, it's a nice article on Apollo 1, 33 years on, but $10 wonders. Woohoo! And then in March 2000, they warned us it was coming. New look issue next month. So from uh, April 1965, had that fantastic Electronics Australia name, and then boom! That was the end of it, folks, because this May 2000, it just gets, oh, Space Mapper, something relatively into the X Factor, Xbox, woohoo, let's whack some Xbox in there. Who's the Bose? Size does matter, folks. Oh, digital music, oh, it's getting all better. Look at the mobile phones. Can you believe it? Gear up your life. Oh, and this, folks, this absolute turd was the last ever edition of Electronics Australia. They'd even dropped the name. It was just EA, but the December, January 2001, wah, 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 it was all over. There was a, a three or four month wait until uh, the next um, incarnation of Electronics Australia came out, and that was called Electronics Australia Today. They added the T on the end, it was called EAT, and we just said eat shit and die. And there you have it folks, that's a uh, first in hopefully a series of videos on my Electronics Australia collection. Let me know what you want. If this format was good where I just went through and looked at some test equipment, eh, let me know the format you want. Anyway, found some good use for some data books here. I knew they'd come in handy one day. Beauty! And if you're curious what was 
probably my opinion was the heyday of Electronics Australia. Well, a good guess, just based on the sheer thickness of it. Um, yeah, I reckon probably the late 80s. Yeah, you know, they had a chick on the front, but eh, late 80s, just based on, you know, sheer number of projects and just the big weightiness of the magazine. There you go. Hope you enjoyed it. Catch you next time.